risen from the dead and is Lord. Jesus is Lord. London, a city full of royals and red buses, great sights like the London Eye and Big Ben. But as many tourists and locals alike stroll along the River Thames, they fail to realize one of the most historic sites is actually among the green grass. A short walk from London's Marble Arch lies a corner of Hyde Park reserved for those inclined to speak whatever's on their mind, but only on Sundays. This unique section is called Speaker's Corner and its history dates back to the 1800s. The Parks Regulation Act of 1872 established a general principle that some parts of the park could be used for meeting and speaking, but some say the corner's history dates back even further. Actually what happened was that there were executions over there. People were taken to be hanged on Tyburn. And what happened was that as you were around, you had the right to speak for as long as you wanted. People talk, talk, talk to ensure that they weren't hanged. Weren't hanged. The Tyburn Hanging Tree, which Tom speaks of, was established as a site for executions in the early 1100s near the current location of Speaker's Corner. Catholics would take advantage of the blurred division between treason and religion in their dying speech by embracing authority of the monarchy but retaining opposition to the Church of England. Hampstead, around the corner in Hampstead, they used to lock up people for criticizing the church and the state. Yes, so, so what? Well, that's nothing to do with execution. Hyde Park also served as a spot in the mid-19th century where mass protests were held regarding the suppression of rights of working people. The Reform League argued for the right of assembly and suffrage for the middle class. Whether the tradition to speak out started with executions, the Reform League, or something else, the northeast corner of Hyde Park that George Orwell and Karl Marx used to frequent is still a hot spot for discussions. Sid, a regular speaker, said many participants are currently working on research and doctorates. One of the things you've got to appreciate about Speaker's Corner is the level of debate down here is a very high level of debate. If you don't know what you're talking about, they'll crucify you. Crucify they will, just ask Diane Hamilton, who has been frequenting Speaker's Corner since the early 80s. I think that one of the things that happened was this, this girl poured a bo uh, bottle of water over my, my head. And um, it was just how she felt. And I just carried on. And two or three weeks later, she came and apologized. So I, I was very, it was a teaching experience. And also made me even more aware that I can upset people. Diane is one of the few women who continues to draw large crowds each week. She has seen the corner change over the years and said topics used to be a lot more political. Ishmael, another frequent speaker, agrees. Now, since the sort of 90s onwards, You've seen a shift towards religion. You've seen a lot of Muslim speakers. You see a lot of Christian um, speakers coming down. And so, you know, out of 15 or so speakers, you know, the likelihood is that 12 or so of them are religious speakers. I think that has killed um, a lot of the sort of original um, identity of what Speakers Corner represented and what attracted many people down there. And for a while, the Muslims were running Speakers Corner. And then we as Christians rose up to respond to that. And now you probably find as many Christians as there are Muslims here at Speaker's Corner. I've seen the growth of sort of Islam um, and men of, of, is, of Islam in Speaker's Corner, whereby it becomes dominated by many Muslims, whereby they then enact prayer. Um, and so you've got like a hundred Muslims, you know, begin prayer, uh, you know, and had a prayer session. Religion is indeed a hot topic, and Ali comes every Sunday to make sure speakers get their facts straight. Let's go to the second time. No. No, look. He says, no. Then he says, see, because I'm putting it down. No, they both wanted to. It's like me saying, I went to the park with Matthew, and I'm saying I went to the park with Luke. Yeah, you can go to the pub. All three of you can go to the pub. 
Ah, of course, I've been saying. The new class stadium was uh, God. It's God and Satan on the same level. No. You said this. That's a contradiction. No, it's not. No. As I said to you, they both wanted the census. As they both wanted Jesus crucified. There are many times when they both want the same thing. Okay, let's say. For the argument sake. Now go to another place. Okay, wait, 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 I said you can have one contradiction, then I'll there put an answer it. We'll there is. discuss it. No, I've answered it. Can I've you, answered okay, it. Okay. Now I raise something. Can you just listen to me? Now I raise no. something. No. Yeah. Open it. Open it or If I'm lying, let them No, it's true. They both want to the centre, so I'm not denying it. Why is someone just representing what I believe? If they say, oh, that's something contradicting, honestly I have to correct them and I will interject and I will talk. And as you see me, I will shout. So over there. However, you know, my opinion on that is that's why churches are there. Do you know what I mean? And it's on a Sunday. You know, don't waste your time at Speaker's Corner. Go to church. There are mediums, there are platforms to give that message. And those spaces are there. Speaker's Corner should, in my mind, but you can't regulate it in that way. So certainly that's the catch-22 situation. So you're going to hear at Speaker's Corner from a Christian telling you about the, the beauty of Jesus Christ. And if you don't worship, you're going to go to hell or whatever it might be. You can get that from the church. So there are already spaces, many of them. You know what I mean? The church is the largest landowner in Britain. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of space for them to sort of put out those sort of messages. Yet even as topics have changed, the soapboxes and traditional ideals seem to remain. I would define Speaker's Corner as democracy in action. The right of people to speak their minds without fear or favor. Certainly, you know, it's an open platform, it's free speech. That means anyone, any issue should have the right to go down and, and, and preach. To be honest, it's a platform where people from different religions come here and express their views. They call people to their faith, vice versa. Despite the open platform, there are some rules. I've been arrested in Speaker's Corner. I've been arrested for speaking in Speaker's Corner um, about three or four times um, and for exercising my right to free speech because there are certain things that you cannot say in Speaker's Corner. You can't say fuck, you can't swear, you can't say anything against the Queen. And, most, and a lot of what I have to say is against the Queen. A few arrests haven't stopped this regular. Our parents came here to build this country. Many of them had the intention to work and then go home. Many of them spent 30, 40 years in this country. They still speak the patwa. Even with the rise of Facebook and Twitter among other social media outlets for open discussion, Speaker's Corner still thrives. Well, I think Speaker's Corner will be there after social media. And so Speaker's Corner has been there for over 100 years. Um, it's a very valid platform. I'm still there. I've been speaking there now for 27 years. Um, it's like a community. It's like a social club. It's open air. The cyber reality cannot replace, you know, the reality itself. Um, just the whole sense of exchange, interaction. Um, there's a dimension of Speaker's Corner that you cannot get in that cyber world, which is face-to-face, -face, which is the, you know, body language. As in the cyber world, no matter how loud you shout or how much you say, you're not guaranteed a crowd like Ishmael or Diane. And yet, Speaker's Corner is growing. Things that you've seen today are also put up on YouTube, and some of the some of the clips from YouTube are being seen by people all over the world. People seem to fancy the idea as Speaker's Corners have expanded to other spots in the UK, as well as other countries including Australia, Canada, Malaysia, and Singapore. It's a meeting place, it's a meeting spot, you know what I mean? You have people from all over the world gather at Speaker's Corner. One of the things that I try to do uh, is to get responses from the audience, so I'm not just lecturing and debating people about my opinion, you know, I try to engage people to participate and to share their opinions because it's equally as valid. With a rich history and continued participation, this Sunday tradition won't be extinct anytime soon. It's, it's, it's cathartic, it's, it's, it's therapeutic to, if you have a problem and an issue, even if it is just to sort of scream it out, do you mean, even if it is to just sort of express and let out what it is you're feeling about something. Stay.